I do want to watch this video. Why I regret spending nine years playing Destiny and why it's too late to quit. This is going to be a juicer. Or I, are, I already know it's going to be a juicer. I already pre-liked the video. I haven't even watched it though. Specifically Destiny 2, a game that I have over 2,000 hours in. And what do I have to show for it? Complaints. No game is perfect, but it isn't until you play thousands of hours of a game that you realize just how not perfect it is. Disclaimer, I'm a complete idiot and have no clue what I'm talking about, so please do not treat any of this senseless rambling as meaningful or valuable. Unless you agree with it, then I was dead serious. <laughs> After playing for nine years and thousands of hours, I have never made a friend playing this game. Off to a good start. Sure, it takes some effort to make friends, but to not make any after nine years of playing should take even more effort. The best way to play Destiny 2 is with friends that you've already made from somewhere else, because simply put, Destiny 2 isn't a great friend-making environment, in my opinion. Not because the community is toxic, but because the game is. You may argue against this, since it is in your best interest to have friends in this game. You'll need them for raiding or high-end PvP, but me and many other players instead choose to do what they can alone rather than struggle to make friends. I have put myself out there many times, but the anxiety was never really worth it. For example, one day I decided I was going to do a raid, so I signed up for a group finder and found a group. We were going to do the very first raid in Destiny 2, which is also obviously the lowest level. It took six hours. Here's the thing, <laughs> raids ultimately have nothing to do with your level, your gear, your shooting skills, or anything else you've been building up thus far. No, the end game PvE activity is all about confusing communication puzzles. <laughs> you look at this guy and have to remember the symbol and tell the other person in the alternate dimension which symbol it is, and then punch him or something, I don't even remember, but it has nothing to do with shooting <clears throat> or looting. Here you are, a talented musician with hundreds of renowned works under your belt. But to become a true master and get your music master degree, you must balance this piano on your finger for 20 minutes. <laughs> yes, I want to make friends, but I don't really feel like playing the telephone game with a bunch of strangers that are only playing with me because they want gear at the end, and whenever I mess up, I'm keeping them in an activity that they didn't want to be playing in the first place. Bungie is an environmentally conscious company, and so they have decided to keep Destiny 2 environmentally friendly by reducing, reusing, and recycling their content. Remember this gun? Here it is again. Hey, remember when it came back? Well, here it is again. Wow, thanks. I remember when I had that. Matter of fact, I'm still using it. To give you an idea of how bad this has gotten, here are some hand cannons. And here are some shotguns. I'm not even arguing that every weapon should have a unique model, but it's pretty disappointing when a new hand cannon comes out and it looks like better devils from year one. Back in 2020, I think, a DLC released called Beyond Light. This added some cool ice magic and an ice planet and other ice related things. I thought that this was one of the best DLCs to date. The added mechanics were cool, the weapons were pretty good, I liked the raid, the story sucked, which for Destiny standards is actually really good. <laughs> but there was one little issue. They removed like half of the content that the game had accumulated. Hundreds of weapons had their power locked at the floor, and several planets were removed entirely, bringing their campaigns and gear with them. But don't you worry, that content will be back with a vengeance and a price tag. Back in 2013, Destiny released, and it was not free to play, but rather $60. Alright, not a great price point for a game that was relatively barren without DLC. But don't worry, DLC would release. Dark Below for 20, and then House of Wolves for 20. These could each be completed in about two hours, but you're really buying them for the gear and activities tied to them. Then Taken King, a big DLC for $40. Then Rise of Iron for $35, cause I guess it's $5 less good than Taken King. And then Destiny 2 releases, and it too is $60. Then Curse of Osiris and Warmind, each for 20. After that, we got another big DLC, Forsaken for 40. Then Shadowkeep, a very poorly rated DLC for 30. And as this DLC launches, a new seasonal content model does too. From this point, Season 9, until today, Season 20, a battle pass of gear, materials, cosmetics, and boosters is released every few months for $10 per season. Then Beyond Light launches for $40. The next expansion is a bit of a controversy, Witch Queen. 
Now, this retails for $40, but if you buy the Deluxe Edition for $80, twice the price, you get two extra dungeons and some cosmetics and stuff. The problem is, dungeons have never been Deluxe content. They are some of the highest quality pieces of late game content and have always been included with the already highly priced DLC. But now, you need to get that premium Deluxe extra cheesy version if you want to actually play the DLC. Otherwise, you're basically playing a demo. But aside from that, the DLC gets good reviews and people like the story for some reason. Then a tragedy happens, the release of the currently newest DLC, Lightfall. The standard edition is now $50, a new record high for Destiny DLC. But wait, there's another version for $100, and it's got dungeons. So, in my book, Lightfall is a $100 DLC, which also has a cheaper, handicapped $50 version. But I actually forgot to mention one expansion. In December of 2021, Bungie had its 30th birthday. And as a Fantastic. birthday present, Bungie demanded 25 USD in exchange for some cool stuff. The main features here were a dungeon, which was very broken, and I think still is, and a weapon, the Gallerhorn. Now, those of you that don't play much Destiny might be confused because you probably recognize this gun. This is sort of like THE Destiny rocket launcher. Well, it was in the first game, and now, to celebrate this milestone with the community and everything we've been through, it can be yours again for only $25. So how much has it- It's so hard to look back on content and understand it from a premium perspective. Because, like, when I look back on the 30th anniversary, I, I immediately think of it in its totality, right? Um, Zer, Dares, the dungeon, all the gear. But understand there's a portion of that that's free to play. You know what I'm saying? So it's really hard. It's really hard to really just break down and go, oh, wait, what did I pay for? the price of every DLC, with the two most recent being Deluxe Editions since they include vital content, and adding all 12 paid season passes since they include essential content as well, we come out at 710 US dollars. Plus tax, it's well over 750. Oh, <laughs> and they also got 3.6 billion dollars when they were acquired by Sony. Later that year, they monetized Halloween. Who's the CEO again? <laughs> Hitler? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Hitler. But hey, at least you got to experience some cool campaigns before they were banished to the content <laughs> vault. Destiny 2's story sucks. The only campaign that felt like it had real weight was the base Destiny 2 campaign, which had high stakes and almost decent characters and a fantastic soundtrack. But it's gone now. That's right, you can't play the Destiny 2 campaign in Destiny 2, because they got rid of it. Destiny 1 hooked me with its promise of an ever-expanding looter shooter MMO set in space. And as I explored it, the scope only seemed to grow. The world felt like it could be hiding so many interesting secrets that I just had to stick around to discover. And I did for nine years. As time goes on, the game becomes harder to get into and even harder to get out of. Tend too much to the new players and you'll neglect the truly loyal ones. But the more you cater towards veterans, the less approachable the game becomes. Playing Destiny 2 has been one of my most profoundly miserable gaming experiences. Why? 2,000 hours, 9 years, $700, and I'm somewhat low level with suboptimal gear and I'm missing a subclass that everyone else seems to have. Next season, I'll be at the power floor, because the floor will rise so much that it undoes any work that I've done this season, basically resetting me to level zero. Much of my gear will become a- When was this video popped up? A month ago? Actually, actually no. So, your level doesn't- there, there's no power floor in, or power level increases um, season to season, just, just annually. But as seasons pass by, tiny, very fixable issues will linger and drive me insane. Keep in mind that it took Bungie until only a couple of seasons ago to give old exotic weapons PvP kill trackers when Master worked. This is a little number that took them years to add. Shader thumbnails are still horribly inaccurate. Menus still close when you're arriving somewhere, oh my gosh, please make this stop. 
These things are not that bad, but for how many years are they bearable? And those are just the little things. See, every season introduces a new exotic armor piece for each class, but most of the time one or more of them are immediately removed for weeks on end because of some glitch that Bungie apparently can't seem to figure out. But suspiciously enough, whenever there's a glitch that allows players to exploit something to their benefit, Bungie is able to figure it out in just a couple days. If having cancer gave you better RNG, Bungie would find the cure in like 15 minutes. But whenever a new exotic that people are hyped for is more powerful than expected, eh, just take it away until someone feels like fixing it. But despite hating this game, I also love it. The PvP offers a depth to build crafting and strategy that I haven't found in any other first person shooter. So when I feel like pulling off some crazy 1000 IQ plays and feeling good about myself, I can always turn to Destiny 2. And I definitely feel an obligation to at least check in every once in a while after all that I've invested. But for the thousands of hours and hundreds of dollars, all I really have to show for it is some cool cosmetics. So, in summary, don't play Destiny 2 unless you hate liking things. Of course, you can try it out if it looks fun, but just take it from me. This game has an uncountable number of issues, most of which are here to stay, or get worse. First up, we're on Diablo right now, because we keep getting error coded. A lot of y'all's comments were, were like, nine years, and all he has is 2,000 hours to show. Who He may have actually done what I did. Like, I have, I have 8,000 hours, but I'm missing, like, I don't know how many more thousands of hours. Because, A, we used to be on console. That doesn't account for Destiny 1. R regardless, though, I don't think there should be a point where it's like, okay, you're 5,000 hours in. Now you can have an opinion. You know what I mean? Granted. If you got like 50 hours in the game, then hold up. Let's let's pump the brakes here. Like you need to experience things. What I will say though, you know, the social aspects of Destiny, considering they threw MMO in the name MMO into its into its genre, what's well, not very social. You know, there are some games that really nail social aspects. Final Fantasy 14 does a very good job of nailing those social aspects. New I thought New World did a very good job of nailing social aspects. We we don't really go out of our way to socialize with random people in the wild being being at this point in destiny's life cycle you know that that kind of sucks like that needs to be something looked at and there are ways in which you can improve social aspects commendation system was one that i was hoping was going to lead to that Ma matchmaking opening up matchmaking for everything where you just literally are you know because there are going to be times where i i'm not going to look for a squad i'm just going to load up a matchmaker with people and and just roll with it that's a great way to just throw people in together and you find someone that you like to play with and we know that that's coming at some point or like an in-game lfg you know i will say destiny's community they can be kind of toxic man have you done this oh you haven't done this before you don't have the this one weapon the hell out my fire team that that is a problem uh the other problem that he mentioned is the narrative and that narratively you know when you've cut content out of the game people are confused i i actually believe even when the content was in the game people were probably still confused imagine if you played the destiny 2 campaign and then immediately jumped back into the game for shadow keep you're probably like huh i i think that it's hard for any mmo out there to have a seamless story experience you know Final Fantasy 14. We 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 praised that game a lot. But you know, I I missed a couple of their DLCs. It was a Heaven's Ward, you know what I mean? Like, wait, what? What went down? And like, you know, I have to do some catch-up work myself. I don't think any MMO really nails how to seamlessly, you know, bring every DLC and story together. I think the only way you can do it is maybe have, you know, something in game where you can like view maybe all the cutscenes you know from start to finish if that's something that, that that you really want to seek out in my opinion though guys if you're really trying to seek out understanding of the story you need to just go find some lore people man Mylan, Vive, there are other there are other lore people out there you will be greatly rewarded if you just really dive into the lore of those channels and there's there's so much more understanding you can grasp we play this game every day i have to watch lore stuff leading up into to an expansion just to recap just to recap what happened over the past year and and again it's like i wish that could be conveyed better in the game but when the lore has such depth i don't know i just i don't know if you could possibly do it justice which is why we tune in for 
you know, hour and a half long videos from these lore guys. I'm, I'm hoping whatever show Bungie's making, it's going to do a better, like it's going to be able to bring everybody in and really just kind of put a bow on things and, and everyone can gain a good understanding of the story. As far as things breaking in the game, you know, he made the joke there that if if cancer benefited the, the player, Bungie would find the cure within an hour. There's some truth to that. They address anything that benefits the player within 24 hours, if not less than that. If there is any type of legendary shard glitch, Bungie is on that shit. If there's anything that really benefits the player or is like remotely out of bound in the fun spectrum, it gets nailed down quickly uh whereas like if it's an exotic that is bug or like it, it ha it's not working as intended it would just be disabled for weeks on end the other side of things though too we we're looking at things very you know black and white there some things are just flat out easier to address i think the you know the legendary shard glitch they just what they just disable the item from being picked up so that's that's easily addressed whereas like you know if it's like an issue with um an exotic like winter bite how many times do they try to fix that right i think what gets me more than than that though is when there's intentional changes sandbox changes to things that i deem to be a fun play style but bungie's tap a, a nail to it and say this is actually out of bound and not good for instance the glaive bills that we used to utilize with synthesis I thought that was really out of left field. You're playing close quarters. Stop mechanics are real. Winter Bite was primarily a problem because it's projectile. Yet it was the melee versions of all of those builds that got a nerf. And then the projectile itself, it took multiple fixes to finally get it to, to get right. So I, I just, I find some of the sandbox changes like, you know, again, maybe it's the timing. Maybe these changes changes were already in the chamber and they were going to be rolling out either way but <clears throat> for that to happen it seemed like where there was a blanket nerf to every glaive build in the game it all started because winter bite was out of bound um as far as the destiny content vault goes the vaulting of content i'm going to take this a step further i think that destiny has lost the magic that the very opening cutscene of Destiny 1 brought. This is the the revamp to this. But I you don't know how long I've been looking for you. I'm a ghost. Actually, now I'm your ghost and you Well, you've been dead a long time. So you're going to see a lot of things you won't understand. This is fallen territory. We aren't safe here. I have to get you to the city. Hold still. This isn't the exact. Don't worry. I'm still with you. This is the new life version, Fast. right? There was a level of exploration that I felt like started in Destiny 1. Um, but that has since consolidated down to like, go jump in this activity. Play this new activity we have with this new season what what the magic that d1 originally had was what's out there and the reality is is maybe the game has just been around for so long and we've played it for so long now we we already know what's out there you know it's another enemy that wants to kill us uh there's some lore to back it up necessarily a new enemy type outside of like loosened hive and tormentors which are cool but the exploration side of things the 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 all the wondering you you don't feel like you're missing anything there's there's nothing hidden in that in that little cave that you even need to be concerned with all you need to be concerned with is the checklist the checklist that bungie feeds you and that that to me is a problem i know that's the sustainable system now that bungie wants to do but if there was ever to be a d3 the world needs to feel bigger we're literally you know surfing the stars here going from planet to planet but it doesn't feel it doesn't feel big other than that uh there were definitely some things that i felt like my guy there was nitpicking about but it was a solid video it is hard to kind of pull friends in to try the game but bungie needs to focus on their core player base and on their veteran players bungie here recently i i applaud them for fishing because that's probably the most creative thing we've gotten in a very long time. And it literally 
it's just us fishing has no skill tied to it but i i have to applaud him for that to just add in stuff like that you know what i mean but as far as like activities go you know deep dives are cool again with all those seasonal activities we're just so we're so used to it and maybe it started way back when maybe it started literally with black armory it was a lot of people complained that the forges were too grindy so bungie backed off on it but when you really think about it the last time bungie really took a crazy risk and tried something just wild was probably gambit you know merging those two pve and pvp trying to be super creative and it kind of it blew up in their face it blew up in their face so much that i felt like after that bungie's been very conservative about what they tried gamut prime none of that really saved it right now somebody brought up the other day we needed like a, a horde mode in destiny i think there's a lot of things you could take from diablo and merge it over here into destiny make it really really good they could have doubled down in gamut like new modes and modifiers like in crucible gamut gamut can be a stressful environment destiny needs to have more exploration you know it just at this point in destiny's life everything just feels small even when we get new beautiful areas it just feels small and i'm not going to get into the whole monetization side of things because i know that guy covered monetization we have an entire video almost 20 pages of stuff to talk about monetization i have a lot to say about monetization that will be coming out this weekend not i'm not going to get into it right now but it's uh it's a lot that we need to say about it. But with 10,000 hours in any game, it would feel small though. I, I get your point. Like if I was to put 10,000 hours into, you know, Skyrim, the world would feel small eventually for sure. But considering this is a live game, the world doesn't feel like it's growing with us. I, I really don't like that content got cut from the game. And then not only that, it got rehashed and brought back to us. And, but didn't even return back in the way that we were promised. You know, we were promised that areas were getting broken down and we're going to come back fresher and better than ever before when they haven't. Leviathan was a perfect example of that. Came back, it was half the version of its original self. I, I just didn't see the vast improvements. Now, enemy density was good on it. And that's what Bungie claims. Bungie claims that they couldn't bring back the area in that way, in the same way that it was before because they improve enemy density. What's the limitation here? What What is the limitation here? Because that was what we were sold on was that the DCV exists for that reason. And whether it's old gen consoles, whether it's servers, whatever it may be, Bungie, put your big pants on, make the decision to improve things for the core player base and reinvest back in this game. If it is servers, reinvest. Man, it made my stomach turn when I saw Bungie said, we're going to do things right. Marathon is going to have dedicated servers. I don't think any of us are playing Destiny with the intentions of funding another game. Everything that we buy in this game to go back into Destiny. Obviously, we have no we have no choice in that. We're not working there. We can't tell what's being allocated where. But man, that, that is just a gut punch. Did I watch the Grenade or J clip? I did not, Luke. You want to drop it? I think what Bungie touches usually turns to gold. Halo, Destiny, I bet you Marathon's gonna kill it. But do you want some real honest feedback from me too? I think it's absolutely fucked up that Bungie would abandon this game's PvP essentially, which is what they've done. They've made us basically no new maps in like four years, yet continue to make us pay hundreds of dollars a year so they can go work on their next baby. It feels like complete bullshit, dude. I, I feel like Destiny players have the right, especially Destiny PvP players, to be pissed. We're still spending a, a over $100 every year to play this game. They literally abandoned us. And I feel like that's really frustrating. Yo, the music, right? What he's saying is definitely resonating with a lot of different PvP players. And it also resonates, I think, with PvE players. I mean, there's there's a lot of people on all sides. I, I don't... If I was a PvP-only player, I would go out of my mind. I Waiting on content for PvP? Oh, my God. I mean, thank God we play everything, you know? I get bored of one thing, I go into the next. I get bored of PvP, I go into PvE. I get bored of PvE, I go dabble in some lore. You know, thank God we have other areas we can go. But if I was a dedicated PvP player, oh my Lord, I would feel that way. I would feel like Bungie literally doesn't have a PvP team. The excuse about new maps from Bungie is 
they're expensive. What do you think? Where is the revenue going then? Okay, they're expensive. Great. This this content is expensive. This DLC is expensive. This the deluxe collector's edition that we buy every single year. That's expensive. When you say that making a map is expensive, what are we supposed to just look at you and say, oh, it's expensive? God, man, you should have told us that to begin with. My bad. My concern with Bungie right now. And look, I I I know a lot of the developers at Bungie and I, I like them a lot. They're good people, man. I think at one time, Bungie was with Activision and then when they split, they were like, we're going to go do our own thing. And we bought into it. Like, I really bought into that narrative. I was like, man, dude, do it. But honestly, as time has gone on, nothing's really changed. It's the same, but with more bucks. In my opinion, you know, the split was not because they felt like they were being held back from being super creative here. The, the split happened purely out of monetary gain. But we romantically believed in it. With that being said, we have to applaud Bungie for a lot of things. We did get an anti-cheat. Took a long time. But I do have to wonder, is it more for Destiny or is it more for Marathon? Are they, are they jumping and really going after cheaters? To go ahead and set the tone before uh before marathon launches now here's the thing cheaters are still in the game they're still in the game you're still seeing you're seeing them make rotations back in but starting from where we started when trials first came back to destiny it is it is a lot better it is better guys loadouts in the game i thought that was that was a fantastic quality change uh, weapon crafting other than like not perfecting the system and it's been a year since then i do like weapon crafting you know there are some things to definitely applaud bungie on but my thing is right now after watching the whole marathon announcement in some ways i feel like all right is this is this going to be your jump from halo to destiny are you going to treat it like that because bungie cut ties with halo right and granted there was a split there and then you know was it 343 and stuff? But they made that jump. And I definitely don't want to see that here with Destiny. Game is almost 10 years old and doesn't have an in-game LFG. Like, what the f is this? They're getting it. They're getting it. And here's the thing. I truly believe this. I, I believe the people that are working on Destiny right now, the developers that are on Destiny right now, is a solid-ass team. Sandbox truly has a solid-ass team. We have way more scope than what we used to have. I don't like the nerfing of things, but like, Merck, Chris Proctor, and those guys, like, they are very solid. I also think the leads are also very solid. But what I also think is that despite having those people work, I think too much of just the people that are just actually putting in the work every single day are being dragged off of Destiny and putting on other projects. What exactly, when are exactly are we getting in game LG later this year? Final Shape is Destiny's end of life. I, I will say this for, for Destiny. They're probably going to gauge to see how well Marathon succeeds. And then that's going to really decide whether or not how much they're going to put back into Destiny. Could be wrong. August is going to tell us a lot, guys. August is going to reveal Final Shape and then also give us an idea of what they're going to be doing afterwards. If Marathon does flop, I think they're going to probably double back to Destiny. But I also don't think... I don't also not... I don't, I'm not sitting here asking for Marathon to flop, you know? You know, I don't think any of us are really sitting around here like hoping Bungie fails. Nobody, if, dude, we wouldn't be buying. I mean, we championed Bungie after the split from Activision. We're like, do your thing, Bungie. None of us are hoping for the downfall of any of their future projects. We don't want to be slapped in the face for, for you know, in, in our eyes as investments. And there's some people out here right now, like the audacity of gamers to believe that what they're contributing year after year Deluxe editions, collector editions, DLCs, and whatnot. The audacity of them to believe that that should be going back to the game that they play. What a crazy thought. What a crazy thing we asked for. Marathon will be the best PvP game ever made. Dude, I hope it is. I hope it is. I hope Marathon is amazing. I hope it's everything that Bungie wants it to be. And, and hope it's everything we want it to be. I hope... I hope it's so good that it literally kills Destiny's PvP. Every PvP player in Destiny 
completely abandons destiny and goes and plays marathon but i don't think it will even in the state of d2's pvp granted we haven't seen gameplay of marathon yet but i just don't think it will and i love i know i know bungie probably hears the doubters right now and i'm sure that just fuels them even more that's just like that just puts a fire under their ass and good it it should you know somebody's sitting there telling you you, you know your baby is going to be shit that should pump you up marathon and destiny are two different games though you know here's the thing i get that comment all the time this x game is different from this game diablo's different from destiny marathon's different from destiny too like i get those comments on the, all the time guys when you are a live service game you are in the same damn arena every one of those games are competing for your time it could be a completely it could be in tetris but if tetris is so dominating if it dominates your time to where you don't think about any other game but tetris you're like, dude, I got to wake up and play Tetris today, tomorrow. Then Tetris is dominating. And that, that game is competing against every, they're, they're competing for your time. If I, if I worked at Bungie or if I was a lead at Bungie, which I'm not, but if I was a lead at any game development studio, I would be wanting to make a game to dominate your time, especially if it's a live service game. We're not here to make friends. I'm not, I'm not here to be chummy with you. Hey, I got March and April. We're gonna we're gonna do really well march and april you guys take june through august i'll be back in december i'm gonna take December. Yeah. i want to dominate your time i want you to play it year round 365 and i want my game to be so good that you never want to look at another game ever again you can say that for extraction shooters too yeah also you know i don't know i don't i don't really know exactly what their formula is going to be i know tarkov exists Man, I just feel like if this game is coming out, if Marathon's coming out in 2025, I feel like, pff, did it miss the boat in some ways? You know what I mean? Marathon's 100% going to follow the same model as Destiny. They're going to make bank whether or not D2 players play it or not. Bungie knows what it's doing. Y'all do realize Destiny 2 almost shut down, right? Like between Vanilla and Forsaken, Destiny 2 was on its way out. Like developers at Bungie literally came out and said, they thought they were going to pull the plug on Destiny. So before we just jump up and just say like, don't worry, Bungie knows knows what they're doing. I'm just saying nothing is ever set in stone, man. I think CD Projekt Red is a great example of that. Everybody's like, oh my God, they're the best. And I love CD Projekt. I love them. But man, Cyberpunk was their humble pie. I think the only studio that I know that always consistently puts out bangers is From Software. I don't even think they, even when they kind of miss, they, they just still don't miss. Bethesda, brother, have you, I don't, I'm not going to get into that. They've had six years of developer time for Marathon though. Yep. So it should be phenomenal. We'll see. And look, if it's a fun game that we all love and that we love playing, pats on the back. Maybe we'll get our PVP team back at Bungie once Marathon is out the door. No, that's the Marathon team now. It has ranks, so I'm already hooked. Uh, well, if this ranking system is anything like competitive is inside of Destiny 2, it's going to be shite. I hate the 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 follow back from Bungie's team on that. I'm like, yo, the competitive experience is ass. And the answer I get back is, this is how every game does it. I don't like their competitive experiences either. It's still ass. This is depressing. Guys, I'm not trying to be depressing. Look, look, look. we still play this game, man. I like Destiny. I do. I definitely want to see where things where things go, where things end up, uh, what the future holds for us. This is just purely a discussion video that got sparked here by us watching that video. The question it seems people are as, aren't asking is where and what is Luke Smith doing? I'm going to say something that's going to sound crazy right now. I'm going to say something that's going to sound crazy and you're not going to like what I'm about to say. I miss Luke Smith. Stop. I'm just saying. I I miss Luke Smith. I miss Deej. I miss DMG. I miss Bombad Thy Boogeyman. 
I was about to say, Luke Smith never left Bungie. He's secretly pulling the strings from the shadows. I have no idea what Luke Smith is doing, guys. I, I really don't. I don't have a clue. I think Destiny needs Luke. A lot of people are going to disagree with that because you're like, but but Luke was the one that pitched us sunsetting. But what if Luke was just the messenger? What if Luke Smith was just the messenger? Bro, you're just saying that for controversy? Luke was ass? No, I believe there's a team that's actually calling the shots for Destiny. Yeah, Luke Smith is still at Bungie for sure. Luke's on Marathon? I don't think so. I don't think Luke's on Marathon. Let me say this. If Bungie kicks me offline, one more... I am playing Diablo. I'm giving you one more shot, Bungie. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.